Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the recap of the first episode of Rolling in the Deep. As above, so below. In the town of Oddwood, in the kingdom of Fedonia, on the continent of Bestodal, there's a strange morning. It's got its typical morning fog, uh, replacing the... Uh, the evening fog that is almost constant in Oddwood, but there's this strange yellowish blue glow coming in from the ocean. It kind of switches between the two of the colors as it performs this strange myriad above the town. Soon after, a pillar of black liquid shoots 15 feet up out of the town's central courtyard. Many townsfolk and some tourists come to investigate. All the townsfolk form a large ring around it, not daring to go closer. But six people arrive at the pillar. A hooded half-elven man, a towering goliath gentleman, a staggering drunken half-elven man with a bronze arm, a short, stout, triton in a very decadent aquamarine armor and another half-elven man in a leather warrior's garb and the odd one out of them is a strange tall human man with disheveled hair um, small glasses just dang dangling off of his nose flipping through a book and almost stabbing the pages with his quill. After a few interactions, the drunken man throws himself into it and pulls himself out. And as he does, some of the liquid pool, pools off of it and melts into the stone beneath. Eventually, the Goliath throws this man into the top of the pillar as he also places uh, the half-elven or the warrior man inside of it as well as this man is thrown into the top some a bunch of this welcoming th thick liquid which does not soak the people that go within it but kind of comforts them it sends it out and it starts landing in a certain section of the ring of the townspeople nothing is heard but the sounds of screaming as this ooze warps and contorts the people that it covers as it shapes them into these six tentacled beings with three below and three above these beings then start tearing through the townspeople there are about 16 of them and our heroes just are dealing with them they're just attacking these things all they can as they strike the first one down, the liquid falls off of it. And what is left is the malformed corpse of an innocent townsperson. They make somewhat short work of all of these oozy phenomena. And then the final one almost flattens itself and then springs out and shoots over a nearby building. All except for the Triton and the Leather Warrior Man chase after it. Those two stay back, are trying to figure out what's happened. The Triton quickly takes off, but the, the Warrior Man talks to the man with the book as he is dragging one of these malformed corpses back towards the building from which he entered. He is then revealed to be the curator of the Museum of the Unreal which is a institute which is dedicated to studying and presenting the strange oddities of Oddwood. After an introduction with him, he quickly heads off and eventually catches the group at the coast. There is a dock which is off. It looks like all the other ones, but it slowly has this strange black bridge 
coming out of the water that this creature is going on. The bridge is probably about 20 feet ahead of this creature as it runs into the deep. And the half-elven man, and the hooded half-elven man, lets forth a bolt of energy, which strikes it at about 180 meters. He then reveals himself to be a dragonborn, and not a half-elven gentleman. They have some more introductions. Now you can see that they are more than just travelers in this place. They are bound by this cause, and they head onto this bridge that has stopped constructing. And at the end of the bridge is this ebony tower featuring the same glow that came in this morning. It appears to be approximately a kilometer or two kilometers out, not that much of a walk. And they walk for what feels like an hour to get there. As they turn around, knowing that they've walked far longer than they should have for this distance, they see no no change, no change in, in visual from where they were. They felt nothing under their feet of the ground moving them or slowing them or impeding them in any way. And they arrive at this tower. Or what they thought was a tower. It looks a lot more like a dome. A small dome about 25 feet high from where they are. It's an open room with a black octagonal pool of liquid in the center as it is congruent with the walls which are also octagonal octagonal After a few moments, just as that moment of that awkward pause, sorry about that. After a few moments of thinking and conspiring of what to do, the drunken man dives into the small pool. He sinks down, but the water does not splash out. It almost looks as if he vanished into a puff of nothing as he slid under it. He is soon followed by the by the Triton, and they both proceed onwards to this small, tight tube that goes down and then eventually curves. They can see two strange-looking indents on the walls. Eventually, the warrior man decides to join them, and Pencil dives similar to the drunken man. He, with a lot less elegance, plummets down and hits the he hits the triton in the back this commotion causes these two tendrils of the same liquid they've been encountering earlier to fill the tunnel at the bottom and they begin to ensnare the two primary proceeders after an exchange of blows from people throwing anything shooting some bolts a few crossbow bolts as well as bolts of energy from up top they eventually dealt with these poisonous strangling tendrils as they go down further into this tube they arrive at the staircase which emerges from the water that they were submerged in and as they emerge they can hear this drip in the back of their head. All of them are just a little off put by it, given the fact that there might be a leak in the tunnel that they're in, but there is no visible leak. It is a drip in the back of their head. Well, it's a drip in all but the Triton's head, as he recognizes this as an encoded phrase. The deep is unfathomable. I am unknowable. They walk and proceed to this door, which they get open with a little bit of injuries coming from a trap onto the dragonborn, and arrive at this octagon.
rectangular room with no ceiling. It goes up almost infinitely and leaves the webs of sunlight moving through the waves on the floor below them. The walls are not of this strange ichor-coated stone, but are this membrane that they have seen as it was in the top of the tube, and it was the same material that the pillar was made of. After a few moments, the Triton utters the words he has been hearing in, his, in the back of his head aloud, and these two sickly abominations come out from the walls to stand on the side of this podium with this glowing orb. The glow is the exact same that they have been seeing this whole time, and this orb is mesmerizing. After the two sickly abominations walk in, they bow and face the man who uttered the words. They are then followed by a cloaked man of similar structure, but he is definitely more well-built than the other two. He's got a cloak covered in crustaceans and a strange wooden mask covered in tentacles rising downward from a lake on top. After some hesitation, the Triton utters the words again, but in reverse. And the two, the two bowing men fall dead. And the man standing in front of their way to progress, which was a portcullis on the other side of the doorway and the podium vanishes into dust. They then spent some time in this room. Uh, the dragonborn man conjuring a hand of magic to move the orb away from the podium, causing the walls to constrict in. But as the, the orb was quickly replaced, the walls would resume their regular position. One, uh, the drunken man checks, just jams his head in the membrane and can see the ocean floor that they stand upon. And in the distance, they see a snake with wings furled behind its back. After shouting some words, he gets, he gets its attention and it almost nears closer. He quickly pulls his head back from the membrane and then sticks it in again. And this creature is coiled looking down at him as it is about 16 feet long. He says something in the demon tongue, and this thing runs for the hills. After a few passing moments, the dragonborn and the goliath both stick their heads into the membrane, and the dragonborn says something in his native tongue. It comes back, and it waits with them and they have a conversation and it reveals that it is Kavayala. Kavayala explains to them that she does not understand why they are here, what they are involved with, how the structure is here, and she does not like it. After a brief dialogue, she heads out back to continue with her everyday business. After this, the dragonborn lays his physical hand on the orb and is shot with this flashing image. He is standing at the edge of a reef, looking out into the blue depths of the ocean. Suddenly, three heads appear. The head of a horse, the head of a dragon, and the head of a strange creature with three eyes vertically down its head and a perfect semicircle of a mouth concealing something with beneath. All three of these heads have long necks which lead down to a central body which cannot be seen from where he stands. It yells that he is unworthy. He should not know of them. He should not be able to comprehend them. And suddenly he's back, standing with his hand on the orb as it shoots him back into the doorway from whence he came. 
suddenly the portcullis opposite the podium and the doorway that they entered attempts to open but barnacles have crusted it shut after short work from some of the more brawny of the group they manage to chip it free and it rises as they proceed onwards into the tunnel a drunken man pulls some rope from his backpack wraps it around the orb and leads the rope through the portcullis into that hallway suddenly he pulls it trying to get the orb into the same passageway as them the second the orb left the podium enough for the walls to close in past the door the rope snapped and before any more investigation could be done a wall was created from where they had entered after what felt like another two hours of walking through this tunnel they arrived at this cavern in this cavern there were these gems of various colors different from the glow that they had become familiar with and this still lake with staircase leading down onto a platform as they walk down a single drip of water falls into the lake and it ripples out as the ripples hit the sides of the walls they violently come into the center whirl into the shape of a majestic lion's body and atop its body are these three whirring spikes that eventually round out at the end to have these three bulbous featureless faces the group commandingly is berating this thing with questions about what it is what are they what does it want what is it it speaks as if it is above them as it it could not have needed to coexist with them and after a few exchanging of words a whirlpool arises on the side of the lake and they're all slowly drawn and brought into it and then they are spat out at the beaches of Oddwood. About ten minutes after they had first step, set foot on the bridge. Thank you.